by now you've heard the story, right? You know, about Massa and Marilyn. I mean, it didn't have to be that way, but we are a pretty stiff-necked, hard-headed group of people. You know what I mean? So we have been going through the wilderness of sin. Not that kind of sin, but that's just the name we call for the moon. And we have been traveling from place to place at the Lord's command. And our Lord God, Jehovah, is such a great provider that while we were traveling from place to place with him, he gave us this pillar, this, this of cloud by day so that the sun wasn't beating down on us. And then at night, he didn't stop providing. But he gave us this pillar of fire by night. I mean, you talk about a nightlight, right? And that fire kept us warm because it can get kind of cold sometimes in the wilderness. He gave us protection so that none of the wild animals would get us, none of the enemies that maybe don't like us would get us. God was our provider as we were going from place to place. And so we get to Rephidim. Just the sound of it is encouraging. Rephidim. It is a place of rest and refreshment, and I was ready for some of that because I was a little tired walking from place to place. <coughs> And so we get here at this place of refreshment. And what do we do? Like we always kind of do. We start grumbling and complaining and testing God. We start Massa and Meribah. And we say to Moses, give us water! Because you see, I guess we didn't we trust God like we should have. But I don't know why we didn't. I mean, think about it. We were in Israel, Egypt for 400 years as slaves. We were under the bondage of the Egyptians. We were told what to do and when to do it and where to do it and how to do it. And, and, and we were in bondage, but God heard our cry and sent us Moses. And we saw I saw the things that God did through Moses. All the plagues and the boils and the frogs and even the Nile turned red like blood. But none of those things happened to us up in Goshen. Only to the Egyptians. And finally, the last straw that broke the camel's back, as they say, was when the death angel came through Egypt. And all of the firstborn males died, even the son of Pharaoh. But no one died in Goshen. See, we had the blood of the lamb across our doorposts, and all of our children were safe. And the Israel and the Egyptians, they gave us all this money and all this, this food and all these possessions. Everything we asked for, they gave us and just said, get out. And so we came out with came out with everything we wanted. And then we got to the Red Sea. And all of a sudden Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he didn't want us to leave. And so he brings all of his chariots, and they're like, they look good. They, I mean, these are powerful chariots, and they're coming down on us, and the Red Sea is before us. And so we get scared and we start Massa and Maribel, Moses! There are graves in Egypt. Why do you bring us out here to die? Moses cried to the Lord, and then he took his shepherd's staff, and he held it out over the water, and the water parted, and what was wet became dry, and we walked on dry land. And when we look back, Pharaoh's army started coming behind us. The waters closed. We were safe. Our Lord God, Jehovah Jireh, provided again. 
So we're continuing on our journey. But all the food we took out of Egypt, well, we ate that up. All the water, that was gone. And we started Massa and Meribah. We started grumbling and complaining again to Moses and to God. Oh, we're so hungry, there's nothing to eat. Once again, God was gracious. The Lord provided manna, which we said, what is this? But it tasted like sweet honey cakes. And at night, he would bring us some nice juicy fat quail. Nothing like a chicken dinner. <laughs> God provided it. But we have short memories. And so we're here now at Rephaim, place of refreshment, and there's no water. There's no water, and we're thirsty. Not just a physical thirst, like I want something to drink, but we're thirsty for the old ways. It's like our world has been changed upside down and, and we're thirsty for the way things were. Yeah, we were in bondage and we were slaves, but at least we knew what to expect. At least we knew we could count on one another and we knew what we were going to get or not get. But this new lifestyle, this new normal, we don't know what to expect. Each day is different. Each week is different. We don't know if we're going this way or that way. It's just as the Lord leads, and we're just thirsty for some normalcy for what we're used to. So we cry. I mean, I was, I was wondering. I wasn't trying to complain, but I was wondering, God, what are you doing? Every time we seem like we're safe, something hits us and knocks us back down. And every time we seem like, okay, this is it, it's like we something else. I was wondering, God, what are you doing? And so Moses, I really feel for him. He's like that middle manager. Because he's getting it from the people. And then he's got all this responsibility from God. And he's getting massa and miracle from us. And he's in the middle. But God spoke to Moses. He told him, take, take the staff you parted the Red Sea and go up to Herod. I will go before you. And so Moses comes to us elders and he says, come on. We're about to walk somewhere. And I'm like, okay, all right. Well, Moses said we're going. We're going with Moses. And we get to that place and I watch him pick up that shepherd's Staff, that staff of humble leadership, that simple thing, and he hits the rock. I've seen water come from a lot of places. I've been around for a while. But I ain't never seen water come out of a rock. And this was some good water. And it quenched our physical thirst. I hope it also shows us that we can trust God. I know one thing. The next time we are facing a challenge, next time we're facing some lack, I'm not going to remain silent. Because instead of being known as Massa and Meribah, this place could have been known as the miraculous providing, the place of God's glory, where the faith of the people will match the manifestation of God's promises. But instead, it's known as the place of our grumbling, complaining, and testing of God. I can't be silent anymore. I need to pray. Pray for Moses. Because he is that middle manager in the middle. I need to speak up to the people that I have influence over. When I hear them grumbling and complaining, let them know, but hasn't 
God done it for us in Egypt? Didn't God do it for us at the Red Sea? Hasn't he provided through the wilderness of sin? If God did it before, he can do it again. I need to say something. Lord, forgive me for not sin. So that's what happened at Rephidim. I hope that when you come to your place of rest, when God brings you through that wilderness, that you won't doubt. That you won't fear. That you won't master and marabah to God that you'll lift up a prayer of faith, that you'll lift up a petition, that you'll remember what God has done before, and trust that he can do it again. Maybe not the same exact way, but God is our provider. Every moment, every second, every day, God is. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your provision. Help us, oh God, in this season to see that you can do the miraculous. You can do the simple. Help us to see your hand at work in our lives. Lord, give us the courage to speak up when folks are grumbling and complaining, even if we got to talk to ourselves. <laughs> Help us, oh God, to remember your faithfulness through so many different things. We love you, we trust you, and we thank you now. In Jesus' name.